Until the early 19th century, most people thought that all life that exists was created by a divine being. However, by the late 18th century, scientists had begun to form new ideas about the origins of life based on new discoveries about the age of rocks and the fossils that were discovered within them. When the first fossils were discovered, it was assumed that they were the remains of animals and plants that were still in existence. However, as more discoveries were made, it became apparent that the remains were unlike any animals walking the earth at that time, and that the deeper within the rock strata the fossils were, the more unlike modern organisms they became. In the mid-19th century, a naturalist called Charles Darwin embarked upon a five-year voyage to circumnavigate the globe and bring back specimens of different flora and fauna from the countries he visited. When studying the wildlife on the Galapagos Islands, a group of islands on the equator to the west of Ecuador, Darwin noticed that the finches on the different islands were fundamentally similar but had differences in size, beaks and claws depending on which island they were found on. The finches descended from a common ancestor but had evolved differently depending upon the different environmental pressures of their islands. From this, Darwin concluded that in nature all organisms compete with each other for resources in order to survive and this competition between members of the same species is what makes organisms evolve. Only the best adapted organisms will survive the competition and reproduce produce, the others will die out. Darwin called this process natural selection and he published his ideas in a book called On the Origin of Species. If you want to learn some more about Darwin's finches, watch our video titled Darwin's Finches and Natural Selection. Building on this work, comparative anatomy is the comparison of the structures of different animals. These comparisons can tell us a lot about how they are related. For example, chimpanzees, horses, bats and dolphins all have the same basic skeleton, although they live very different lifestyles. Analysis of fossils by scientists in the 18th and 19th centuries and by modern day paleontologists has provided further evidence for Darwin's ideas about evolution being a process of natural selection with the best adapted organisms surviving the competition for resources. Transitional fossils are the preserved remains of organisms that appear to have traits common to more than one species. People are always surprised to hear that whale ancestors were actually land mammals who then evolved back into being water dwellers. Fossils such as these add further proof to the theory that evolution and the emergence of new species occurs through a process of gradual changes. Nowadays, molecular biologists study the DNA of various organisms to look for similarities in their DNA sequences. The more similar their DNA is, the more closely related two species are. Using these techniques, biologists can be certain that humans and chimpanzees have evolved from a common ancestor over several million years, thought to be about 6 to 7 million years ago. In this video, you have learned that there are a number of different methods for measuring the relationships between organisms and that these methods support the theory of evolution by natural selection.